How great do you have to tell something that is so great before you know it's really great? What in the world kind of question is that? Let's talk about that. <laughs> Mm, mm. Should have drums in there. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, how anyway. are you awake? So, uh, yeah, time change does not affect me. Wow. Anyway. You're immune to its terror. So how great do you have to tell something that's so great before you know it's really great? Like, how, 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 how many times? How wonderful does it have to be before you can tell them that they're wonderful? Yeah. Very so wonderful. the first, I guess, three years of our marriage... Um, I guess Katie had like a little self-confident uh, issue. Oh, really? We're, we're going to go there? We're going to go spread out all Katie's But I insecurity. thought you were wonderful, beautiful, and majestic. Majestic? Yes. I don't know about that. But I thought you were. And you still are. Mm-hmm. But anyway, and I had, to, I had to tell her enough that I love her just the way she is, just the way she, she's wonderful to me, uh, to convince her like for three years. And now she just knows it because I love her. Because I'm awesome. Yeah, she is. She's all that in a bag of chips. Doritos. Cool ranch. Cool ranch. Actually, them flaming hots are pretty good. Ooh. Anyway. <laughs> so. Um, Move on. But there are things in the world that are great just because they are great. You don't even have to tell this thing or this person that they're great. I mean, look at the, the um, you know, Niagara Falls. It yes. just exists. Like, it's wonderful. It's great. It's awesome. Um, the Grand Canyon. I've never been there, and I've never been to Niagara Falls, but they say it's beautiful, gorgeous. Just don't, you know, fall over the edge. Um, you know, the seven wonders of the world. You know, uh, Katie saw the Taj Mahal. Does, does it have to actually go out and say, I am wonderful? Uh, no. No. You just go there, and you're in you're awe. You're in awe, yes. So, I think when this scripture, when uh, Samuel wrote this scripture... In 2 Samuel 7, 22, he was just acknowledging it, not securing it. Like, it was already great. It was already awesome. It was already blessed. It was already existing before even Samuel existed. But it's it's one thing that it's so wonderful, but yet when we acknowledge it, it humbles us. And I think this is a, a just a, a majestic scripture. Here we go. How great you are, sovereign Lord. There is no one like you, and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. Now, we can say that on the other side of the cross, too, because we have heard. There there is no excuse for anybody, because we have heard about God, we have heard about Jesus, we have heard about um, how much love and, and wonderfulness, just people deny it, or people turn away, or people don't like it, or people love it, or people... Uh, become friends with God or become saved. Like, there's only two options. You either hate God or you love God. There's no no in between. And so when we acknowledge that he is sovereign, sovereign means that he's over all things, above all things, has everything in his hands. He is in control. Sovereign means he is in control of everything, literally. Um, he has, you know, he's got the whole world in his hands. And literally he does. Okay. Then there is no one like you. So when we say there's no one like God, then there's probably small G's, small gods, small demons who want to be God, who have small power. And a lot of people acknowledge that and have idol worship or demon worship or put things before God. But he is the one true God. He is the one who made everything, even the demons, because they were angels at once. He made everything. So nothing else should be worshipped because he is the creator of all things. And all things should be worshipping him. And we've heard it with our own ears. We've heard this over and over again, that God is wonderful and beautiful and majestic and graceful and peaceful and has so much grace abounding. And I just can't say enough about God. And I think it really sums it up. There is no one like you. How great you are. Now, this idea of greatness, I mean, it's just acknowledging that he's great. He's always been great. He's always been kind. He's always been faithful. He's always been jealous for our heart in our life. He's always sacrificed. He's always given to his children. He's always done everything for us. And all he wants back is worship. 
that's a pretty small price to pay for some somebody who loves us unconditionally with grace and mercy and love and, and justice and sanctification and I mean just I don't know I'm in love with God and I think we should just fall in love with him all over again as we say how great you are sovereign Lord you're above my heart you're you're above my ideas my traditions you're above my money, my house, my wife, my children, my husband. You're above all things. So let's just act like it. And just acknowledge God as sovereign and great and awesome and powerful. My challenge for you today is thank God for who he is today. I love you. Jesus loves you too. You have a great Monday. Monday. Woohoo! Bye-bye. That was a good message.